Hi everyone, it's Dali here. Let me see if I'm on. I should be coming on any minute, they tell me. Let's see. Let's refresh and I should be live. Here I am. Hello everybody. I hope you can see. Let me make me make me big. I have to um, remember to switch off the volume. Because what happens is I can hear myself. There we go. Right, I switched myself off, as they say. Not literally. Um, I hope you're enjoying this beautiful sunny day. There's a couple of you on board. And uh, so it is gorgeous here. Um, we're very, very lucky. It does get cold in the evening, so we're not that lucky yet. But um, it's uh, really nice to have you all here. And what I was going to do today was do a rustic Paris um, project because I haven't really had a play with this. I know Pip did a beautiful, good morning Pip, um, did a beautiful project with this using the um, one of the buildings. So I'll just show you that in here. Let me see which one did you use. I'll probably cut that one up, no, my luck. Um, let me just go through it because it's just so much. Just look at it. It's so rich. It's so beautiful, this one. So Pip used this and did a really beautiful project. Also, Jill has done a really lovely project on Crafty Surgeons. The Crafty Surgeon, please take a look on that as well. So, as many of you all know, while well, I'm just waiting for a couple of you to come on board, um, Pip and I launched the Rustic Paris, the Shock Art Sisters pad, uh, which is um, the fourth in the series. So we've done Bird Song, which has been extremely popular. We've done Fancy Floral. We then did, uh, so we did Bird Song, Astral. So if you're looking for men's cards, I would say Astral um, Journey. And then we did Fancy Floral, my father's favourite. And then now Rustic Paris, which is one of my favourites. So it's got greens in it. And I know Britt also likes greens. Hi, hi Art Angel. Sorry, I'm sorry, I just need to fix my phone up. Sorry about that. <laughs> And calling. I did tell her I am going to be on Facebook Live, but does do they listen? No. Good morning, Charlie. So, um, just going back to it. So we launched Rustic Paris um, as the fourth one. We launched the stencils, which they all have a stencil with them, and then we launched this beautiful Paris stamp. It really is beautiful to work with. And then we've got these lovely um, rice papers. Now. Uh, Pip will be doing a beautiful online workshop so if anybody has not signed up either on Pip Art Creations or Dali Art Market please go ahead and have a look at the beautiful workshop that we've got planned for this um, and you can do the workshop you can you, you buy the kit so it really is up to you what you want to do so so without a further ado what are we doing today is the question Right, let me, so I'll put these over here for a second, so I don't get them in the way. Well, today, this is what we're making, or this is what I'm going to try and make. So, this morning I was like, as usual, and uh, Pip will tell you, I was pulling my hair out. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? So, I have made this very 3D mixed media card with very little may look like a lot to you, but it's not a lot there in terms of products you need to do this. And I am sure most of you will have the products. And then that's mainly, you. well, it is using the Rustic Paris collection, which on, I know, in the UK, oh, it's nice, nice in Cornell. Oh, it's not always sunny in there, I know. Um, but if you've uh, uh, not got the Rustic collection, it is a really nice collection to have. And I know, Kirsty, I know, uh, Paul's just written to you, um, uh, or Christy, I should say, sorry. Uh, I've just written to you. Um, we do have it 
um, we're just waiting for your finishing wax to come in um, then we'll send you everything out which should be in the next day or so so sorry about that so now you can see I've used uh, the, the papers and let me get started because I bet you're all dying to see how I made this I've, I've nearly forgotten how I made it myself okay so first thing I do is I just take and you can take a cereal box for this is I just take let me keep that there so that you can keep an eye on it all of you just for a second so I've got an 8 by 8 here and then at the back I just put it onto black card now you could put it onto a card front as well oh that's lovely our angel I'm happy that you received your collection all soon oh I'm sorry it's been a very sad week oh that's very sad oh I'm so sorry to hear that oh that's very very sad um, please send our, our love and our regards um, I can't imagine um, how hard that is um, I lost my husband nine years ago and I still feel like it's yesterday um, so yes that's a very very difficult time for all of you wishing you all the love strength and happiness to get through these difficult times you take care though um, crafting is always a good thing um, they say so um, you know be kind to yourself too all right so moving forward um, using up just any cereal box or craft card or whatever you've got or if you've got a craft card you can use it and then just some black card just to mat and layer it onto so it gives you an idea how I've been working with that right the first thing I did is I need to do the background and now you can see I've done the background here because you can see all this is the background so let's get started on that first so the first thing I did was I took let me see I've got my glasses on light light channel lichen green however you say it um, oh thank you Christy uh, so lichen green and all I'm going to do is I've got I've got a bit of a wet brush because I'm right at the end of mine is I'm literally going to take the lichen green and I'm just going to brush the back of this no need to be exact just we're just going for some color I don't want to see as much as the black the black the grey the grey board or the or whatever you've got. I and mean, you could start off with a white if that helps you. You could start off with a coloured paper. Now the other thing you could do, and I I did think about doing this, is you could also put one of the rice papers down. So say for example, I'm not going to do it now because I want to show you that. I could have used that as my background and then built on top of that, and that would have been beautiful. And I think I might do that for a reverse canvas. So let me just carry on and do this so all I'm doing is just putting a little bit of color down not a lot just enough to to do a bit of a coverage I'm only wetting my brush because I'm right at the bottom of my pot and I don't want to waste it and just go in either direction it's nice to have strokes because then that makes up all the texture in the background and keep doing that there we go so it's not you don't need a lot so if you've got a light color you want to work with I've chosen this because it does have that green in the pad or a similar tone so that's why I've chosen this I hope you're all well and uh, and uh, taking care of yourself hi Jill thank you very much Jill for that beautiful project with rustic Paris it looks lovely I love the focal points of the buildings and then the chains and everything Right, so all I've done is just put a little bit of this um, decal, uh, de decal paint, the light and green. And then I'm going to give that a quick blast just to dry it a little bit. And I've switched my gun off. Whoa. So there we go. It dries really, really quickly. Okay, now the next bit I need to do is I'm going to put a little bit of the crackle primer down not a little bit I'm just I said a little bit I don't know why I said a little bit so just put it again you can put it randomly mainly at the sides because that's what you're going to see the most and then you've got this sort of middle bit here as well so rather than trying to do it all um, I'm going to do it randomly so again I'm doing the sides 
oops, and down. This is just the crackle primer. So we're just doing the edges mainly, and then I'm going to put a few strokes through the middle here. So it's moving, it's having a dance of its own. And I am going to put a few few strokes in there because let me just push it through. There we go. I'm not too fast if I haven't covered the whole area, as long as I've covered the bits that I really want. The thing is, if you don't put the primer on, the crackle will lift eventually. But I'm going to be putting a lot of stuff over the top, so I'm not too worried. Okay, that's enough for me. So I'll put my brush in water. Then I'm going to actually get the second part, which is the crackle paste, but I just need to give this a quick blast. So that's what we're going to be doing. Look at that. Hi, Lynette. Um, I hope you're well. So, I'm just started, so anybody who's just joining, this is what we're doing today, or this is what I'm trying to do today. Um, so, I've just put down some of the lichen green uh, decal paint, and the next thing I'm going to do is I've just done a little bit of crackle. So, just going to take it very, very thin. And there we go. So, I'm not putting a, a very thick coat down at all. In fact, I'm lifting. I'm putting it down and in fact I'm scraping it off and this is where you get the really small crackles and I really like this effect if you're doing a background this is a really nice way to do it the thicker you put it the, the, the larger the cracks so I really like I mean I just like this look I think it looks really sort of very vintage very shabby chic I put, did a beautiful card yesterday using the the, giving you ideas about shabby chic so you could use some of those elements and some of these and create this sort of card as well and this could be a card this could be a large canvas you can make this on a smaller scale so that's all I'm doing I'm even going crossways so I've got a little bit of texture coming in all over that a little bit more here not much else So the beauty about mixed media is, is that you're never too worried about the results because it's a combination of products, it's, it's an expression of yourself, so you don't need to worry, there's nothing to be exact about. There we go, now I'm going to put the dry. Now you can see that already. That's already crackling, so it doesn't take long. Watch, that's really clean for me. Wow. Right, so that's it, really. That's one part of the background done. Then what I did was I took mint and I also took white coffee, which I absolutely love. Um, not white coffee, but the colour white coffee. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take a little bit of the both the, the mint and the white coffee and I'm going to go over the background. Not too much. Now I'll start off with the lighter colour purely because you just go in and again don't overthink this. If you've put too much down or you feel it's too thick like I do there, what I always do is I was gonna say I always have a baby wipe ready, but I didn't. 
then I can just rub that back a little bit yeah and that's what you can do with any any paint while it's still wet and all I'm doing is I'm just coming in because there's yellow in the book so there's yellow in there so that's what I'm sort of matching it up to the hues of the yellow okay so again my style is not to overthink anything <laughs> and and I think that's that's just that's just me and I love this effect that you get you could do this on furniture actually it'd look beautiful so it's, it's just a really nice way hopefully you can all hear me and you can all see me and everything's all right if anybody's got any questions far away um, Pip also has these products on her site as well as I do so you know please have a look um, so that's where we are with the yellow the, well, the white coffee as I call it or well, it is the white coffee and a little bit of the blue okay again maybe a bit too much there and I use some of that and then I rub it down as well and the other thing you can do is, is squirt a little bit of water but I'm I'm conscious that I don't want to squirt too much water because I am working on and it's not a canvas now if you were working on a canvas you could probably squirt a bit more water at it okay so I'm just mainly doing the sides but I want to do the inside as well so just mainly doing the, 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 each of the sides okay and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really happy, happy with the way that's turning out. Now, if you want to introduce a little bit more of the uh, lichen green back in again, then you can as well. So you can just bring it a little bit more in if you wanted to. If you had a bit more grey space that you wanted to fill, then you could. And all I'm doing is I'm just doing little bits again, breaking down a little bit of that mint again just blends in really really beautiful okay right and I've, I've just worked it over the top I haven't dried it in between or anything like that I'm going to give it a quick dry now Right, so I'm really pleased with that. So, can you see all the detail already in that? So, so the next thing I want to do is, I'm going to use, this is called brown, but there's an espresso as well, so if you haven't got a brown, you can use the espresso, medium mist, and I really love this. And what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to just take the, the, the stopper, and I'm just going to do this. I'm not too worried. And I really like this effect because it's more it's it's easier to work with than a distress ink for me I'm not worried that it's going on to the card either um, so I'm just putting that down and it's sort of soaking it in try not to flick it everywhere like I do usually so you can just see and then all of a sudden this comes quite vintage like um, all you've done is add a little bit of this beautiful you could squirt it on, you could put some onto your mat, you could use a brush, you could do any of those those things. Let me just uh, wipe that up. So look at me, very tidy today. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to rub bits of that in while it's still wet. Now, I've got that thing going on again, haven't we? I'm moving. And just taking a bit more. You don't have to use your fingers, by the way. I just like to because I like that effect I get. Now, can you see how that's now changing it again? And I love this corner. So it's just about bringing in more colour and just taking it randomly in spaces. Again, you could spray a bit of water. You could add a little bit more other bits to it. I think I'm splashing it all over me today and just add a little bit more and you can build this up you know you don't if you feel you want to build it up a bit more you can so I just love the effect it gives more so it gives you these stained sort of look in places look at that 
I just love that texture. And this is just a bit of grey board. I'm going to put some through the middle as well. I might as well. Can you see how beautiful? And this stains in a different way to the Lazors does. It's a much more richer product. It's a, it's, it's a really nice way to get these really nice effects without having to try too hard. And I love the way it takes um, colour on, on, on the background and stuff. So, can you see now how lovely effects that's giving me? All of a sudden I've got all... Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> right, so that's where we've got to. We're going to use a lot of this medium, medium mist. That's where we've got to first. Now, the next bit, the way I did it, was I then decided I wanted to layer a piece of the rustic Paris. And how was I going to do that? So this is the hard bit, some of you will say. But... I'm just going to take randomly a page out of the book, so I'm just going to take this one at the bottom, and I'm going to use that. Now you could have started with this and built on top of this, but I just like the fact that I've got this sort of, what, what you can then do is, is easily you've got a layer there. You haven't used two layers of paper, you haven't had to worry about it, and you've actually got there. Thank you. Um, so the next thing we want to do is, is we sort of want to tear this in half. As best as you can, yeah? Which way shall I go? Do, 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 do. I think I'll go this way. It doesn't really matter. So, I'm tearing it towards myself because I like that white line. It doesn't matter if it goes right, if it's too much less. The idea is we're going to fit it onto here, yeah? If you did it corner to corner, then make sure your piece at the bottom is a little bit bigger. Because otherwise, these are 8.6 inches. So this is eight by eight, so that's why I've done it to this bit rather than this bit. Okay, so that's one side of your paper. Now you can put that whichever way you want to. You can turn this around if you want to. So you've got it this way. You can turn it over, so if you want it this way, we can do it this way. So you've got lots of ways. I quite like, I quite like it this way. Uh, this way, I quite like it this way. So each time you do it, it will be different. So let me do it, I'm going to do it this way. Okay. And then I just want a smaller bit here. It doesn't have to be, I'm not going to use the same design. I don't want to do that. I want it to be a little bit different. And what I did was, I decided I'll just use that bit here and then just tear a bit from here as well. And then you can, and I'll show you what I did with the rest of it in a minute. Okay, so we stop with that bit. So that bit will become this bit. Okay, so that's how I've done these two bits. See, not difficult. What I did with this bit, I will show you. I've cut out using a Stamperia die. It is beautiful, it comes as a single die. I don't know what it's called, I can't remember, but I know we have some on the website. I'm sure Pip has, um, thank you Gloria, has some of these on her site as well. So, did this, absolutely beautiful. It's such a gorgeous die. So, what I did with my scrap from previously is I cut out um, the piece. Yeah, look at that. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> It's so gorgeous. So I just used it to cut that bit out. And again, what you could do is, you could paper piece in these. So say if you were doing a card, you could cut, oh gosh, cut one out and then look at that. Doesn't that look beautiful? And then you could do some stamping in the background and that could be a really nice DL card and it would look absolutely gorgeous. And I just love this color, the way it all works together. And you know, you can just see this how nice it would look even on, on this piece here. So just to show you, there's lots of different ways and you cut into these. You could use these for berries, you could use the leaves, you could use parts of it. I love these sort of dies, really, really nice. So anyway, I'm gonna put that aside. And one of the other dies, and I don't even know if we have this on the site and I apologize, if anybody wants it, then they need to just drop me a message, um, is that 
we have this die. This is a die that Pip and I created. It's absolutely beautiful to work with. Um, we've made it easy so that you can cut everything in one go. Um, and it's really large. You can make small flowers, large flowers. You can make flat flowers, 3D flowers. There's so much. But if it, So this is something I've also used. This is what I used oops, to create this flower here. And it is the most beautifulest flower. So you can use it with your papers. The papers die cut beautifully, absolutely beautifully. So there you go. So that's what I've used there. So I've used some of the leaves and bits and pieces. Remember when I did the baby, as uh, most of you know, I had all these doily bits left over as well. Well, basically, I've used those in here as well. So when you've got scraps, please don't throw them away. Even little bits of paper etc so I've used everything that's from the front page of the rustic pad that I've used there if anybody hasn't noticed Paris rustic Paris um, I've already cut my flower so I want to just show you how beautiful that cuts so you get the, the big petal the next petal the next petal and you can do lots of different ways with these so you get one two three four five five different sets and you can use either obviously either side and I'll show you what we're going to be doing with that when we do that. Now the other thing I also cut it out of which I love doing is um, book pages. Now with the book pages, I mean they're very, obviously you know book pages are very thin and you can get thicker book pages. And all I do is I take them and I just layer them. Yeah. And even if you just do that and that, you can get the most beautifulest flowers. And obviously I haven't done anything with that. And that's what I'm saying is, is that you can then build up really, really easily a really nice composition. Or you can keep them quite flat. I mean, obviously I haven't done anything with this, but you can see what I'm saying. And then you can do that. But I just wanted to show you, I might use that, might not, because I want to work with this and show you what I've been doing with this one. Okay, and then I've got a few feathers here. I've got the the clock face, which I'm going to use, which is, as you can see in the background here. Yeah, I've got a bit of string, got a bit of thread, a little metal butterfly. So, and then I've used the stamp. Right, so let's get on with the next bit. Okay, so we've got to this bit. The card's still probably got a little bit damp, so that's all it is. So the next bit I want to now do is, is I've got a little bit of reading pages that I've also, book pages that I've also sneaked in. So just get a piece. And again, you don't need a lot. If you haven't got, if you haven't got this book pages, use something that you get in your junk mail. Um, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to tear, again, tear down the middle. I'm not being, you don't need to be precise about this. I'm not doing a very good job. Um, and then tear again, yeah, because all we're going to do now, oops, I'll leave it there, there you go, all I'm doing is I'm going to be tucking this into here, so I probably want to get rid of this bit, because I don't want it to be straight, straight, and all we're going to do is, this is again going to become more, more texture for us, and this is all it's about, is adding layers, texture and you can do it however you want to do it there is no rights or wrongs about this it's just I'm just showing you how you could lay this composition out yeah so we get to this point um, and then you can see what I've done with this bit so let me show you how I got to make it look as grungy as that so all I do is I take a large pair of scissors and you all might have a you might have distressing tools first thing I'm going to do is just come in always be careful when you do this please and I just want to rough up the edges I've already roughed up the edges by tearing them but I want to go one little extra bit so that when I get the um, media mist it sort of soaks in and gives you an even better finish okay so I do it on all the sides. I don't just do it on the sides that I haven't cut. I'm not worried if it's ripping, if it's not coming out quite right. I'm not worried about that. 
Yeah, and I do that on all of your pieces. So you just keep going and doing that. Be careful with your hands, please. And um, then you can see. Oh, Jill. I oh, know it's just so nice to use some of these products. You know, we have so much. And it's just nice to be able to look at some of these products and do something a little bit different. And so all I'm doing is, please be careful when you do this. Um, I know there are tools out there that you can do it with. Okay, so those are our two bits of paper. I keep turning it around. I quite like that bit, so I don't want to cover that bit too much. So I'll have to think about that when I do that. And then you've got these bits as well. Okay, so that's what you've got as your background. So let's, let's colour those, and then let's start to stick that down. I'm just going to give this a little bit better. It's just because you've thrown product at it, it's still got damp in its core. That's all that is below that. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is take those four bits. Very, very easy to do. Right, you can do a couple of techniques. You can either do what we did initially, or you can cheat like I do, which is I'm just going to tuck. So I'm going to do. I'm only going to do one side. So just take the edge of your book page, just run it through the liquid, and what it will do is it will give you this sort of edge, which is exactly what we're looking for. Same with this one. There you go. Doesn't matter if it's too much, too less, it's just an effect we're going for. Yeah? Just make sure you do a little bit on the sides, just in case you see a little bit of the side. There you go. So... And I love the way the medium is just soaks up on these sort of book pages. Now this would be lovely to do your flower with as well. So when things, if you wet something and then it let it dry, it goes actually quite hard. And again, now you can do, it's up to you how you want to do it. But again, you can do exactly the same. Now just bear in mind which sides you're going to use. So you'll probably want to ink it. So I know I'm going to use this side. So again, I'm just dipping it in. It's such an easy way to do it. If you want more control and you want to do it slightly differently, then you can, obviously, because then you might not want it all to come over to this side like this. I'm not too worried um, too much because I like that grungy look. But say if you didn't, then you could just use a brush or your finger. Um, it does come off because I took it off earlier. Um, and then you've got this really nice, it just makes it look oldy worldy again. I always find with my fingers I've got just so much more control and I know it's a personal thing. Some people don't like touching product, some people love it, like me. Um, so I just keep putting a little bit down and then lifting it up and then just putting it down again. And I love this effect. And it really does age it. Now you can get this effect with a Lazor, but these are a slightly richer, so they give you this absorbency that goes in, it's not a stain. The dissolves are a stain, so I know a lot of you have asked me that in the past. Why? But these are the, the mists are going to give you a different look. Okay, so we've already stained all of those, yeah? To start us off. Okay. Now, it's funny how I always think mix, with mixed media, it all comes together just at the end. You, never, <laughs> you look at all this and you think, oh my God, what is she doing? Okay. So, what you then want to do with all your pieces um, is, is to start to sort of bend them back a little bit as well. And then, if you want to add more brown to them, then, you know, go in like you might want to when you've turned them. Uh, if you want to, you can use a distress tool as well. And then all you're doing is you're lifting all of that well, it's wet, it's even easier to do. This paper's a very, very, very forgiving. It's 200 GSM, so it's a really nice weight to die cut, to work with, and to throw mediums at. So that's how I'm getting these layers, yeah? 
So you could even do it like this if you wanted to. I don't want to cover the right section, do I? So let's put that there. Then this one, again, do exactly the same. If you want to put more ink on them, then do so. But I'm quite happy the way it's coming out. So each time you do it, it will have a different, a different look. You can do this with any of the papers or anybody else's papers. Um, it's just a technique that I really like and I think it really works. So it's a really nice way to add add to your projects. Remember we like that bit. So let's start this way. See? There you go. Or I like that bit I should say. Not we. There we go. So can you already see how that is coming about? How quickly that comes about okay so I'm just building and building and building on this and again just use your fingers take it back and just rough it up and then that will sit just behind there and give you another another layer yeah we've still got bits to do on these so don't worry too much Oh, I'm doing the wrong side, aren't I? Nobody told me I was doing the wrong side. There we go, you probably were. I can't hear ye. Okay, and then what I'm going to do with these is, because they're still very, they're quite white, is take a little bit of that decor sort of colour and just take it so that I can just add a little bit, not too much, just a little bit to the to the edges so it adds a little bit more again it's all about adding a little bit of detail to your projects not too much but just now and again to somewhere that it adds that detail it's bringing those colors back in and saying oh that's okay that works but you know you can sort of break that up a little bit Okay, so the next thing we want to do, what I like to do is, is so that it makes it a little bit easier for me. And you can wait until the end to stick your composition down. But Dally's the most impatient person that you're ever going to meet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually start to stick mine down first. And what I suggest is leave this bit open. So the first thing I do is I just stick this corner down. Now I'm using these as the spaces that you get in your canvases. If you don't have this, just use a piece of cardboard or a bit of finished product. A uh, finished product? Um, packaging. That's the word I'm looking for. So I'm going to just stick that there because that will give me a little bit of room. Um, and then maybe use two hands. And then what we're going to do is we just eyeball that down. So that's just going to sit there. Yeah. And then what I do is I just take this corner and I'm going to stick that corner just there. Because I want this to be raised. And then I'm going to take this corner and I'm going to stick it there. So all of a sudden we have got now, let me just show you very quickly. Look at that. We've already got a layer that is quite raised. And already we, we are building so quickly a layer. And you can do this with your canvases. You can do this with your, you know, you could have put the rice paper as your first layer, as a layer, and then built onto that. And again, I'm so impatient. I don't even want to use two hands. So you don't have to have it all lined up perfectly. But I know some of you like pip word. Um, so just take on, again, the corners. And you can always come back and glue further. Yeah, this is just a start. But I like the fact that it's raised. It's got a little bit more dimension. If you wanted, you could put that little corner down just so that you, you know, it's again up to you. Now these bits, I think what I'll do is I'll roll roll that a little bit more around a brush. Yeah, 
So what that will do is give me a little bit more definition because I don't really like it the way it is because it's too flat for me. So I just take the brush and just give it a little wiggle. Wrap it around the brush and give it a little wiggle. Little wiggle and there you go. Now see how much of a difference a wiggle makes? Um, and then you can then put that into there and again another layer and all I'm going to do is tuck that in and that's why I said make sure you do not stick that bit down because that's what's going to give you layers and if you want to go a bit further with it then you just keep going in and I don't mind because I quite like the fact that it's not straight I can squash it I can do it and it's all going to add to that texture that we're putting together so you can see already texture being created See how easy, easy that is. So wrap. Now you can do this with any of your papers. Obviously with um, book pages it's, it's more fiddly, but everything else is much easier. Okay, so again, love this effect. And then we're just going to tuck that in. Again, let's put him into here. I don't know why he's a who, I'm going to put him further down on this side and and you could do more you could put more bits up here you could put more detail in so now look at that already that's without any of the next level of detail or anything like that we've already started to build this now you're probably thinking where did you get the rest of the bits from so this bit this bit this bit this bit all come from the stamp I'm going to show you how I did that. This is a really nice way of adding real dimension to your projects. Okay, so I'm just going to put this aside. So can you see already how, I know it's taking a, thanks Pip, I know it's taking me a little bit longer than usual probably, but I really wanted to do this and play. So the next thing I need to do is I'm just going to take, um, it's just sitting there by the way, and I'm just going to stamp onto it. Right, all I'm going to do this is as hard as it's going to get. She says looking for her stamp now because she's decided to hide it. Now you could stencil, you could have, you could stencil onto this bit. By the way, I'm not going to do that today. But if you wanted to, you could actually also stencil onto this using the beautiful Paris stencil. Right, my stamp is here, and I can see it, but I'm just faffing about. Right, all I'm going to do. This is as hard as it's going to become. I'm actually using a distress ink rather than the vintage photo, rather than, you could use any. Just use a brown, that's all I suggest, because that's what's going to give you that warmth to match the colours that we've got in the pad. Okay, just love it. I'm quite looking forward to doing this with all the pads now. <laughs> so if you see this style a lot, it's because I've got a little bit addicted to it. And I thought, you know what, I want to do something a little bit different. Okay. And all I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this, I'm not going to overthink it, I'm just going to, I don't even know if I've inked it well enough. So, that's very typical, Dolly. So we're just going to put that down. If you want to stamp it perfectly, please do. I don't, because I'm only going to throw things at it, literally. And that's what I'm going to do with it. Okay, so the next thing I did was once I've stamped it, I'm just pressing it because obviously I haven't put it on an acrylic block, I haven't done anything with it, and I just wanted to get a lovely print. I just look at that, and that's without me trying. Okay, so that's that bit. I'm just going to quickly hit dry on it. Right, the next bit I'm going to do, really easy, is to just tear that again. Don't worry if you tear it like I've just turned it. Turn it, teared it. Okay, so what I did, so that you, you know what I did, I tore bits of it. So the first thing I did was I tore this bit out, because I thought this would be nice, like a sort of a stamped image. So just take that, and doesn't matter how it comes out, just tear it. So that's, I'm happy with that. So that's the bit that I did for this bit. Obviously, you've got to tear this bit. Might as well do it now we're at it. 
and this is going to give our like rigid edges yeah if you feel it's too sharp like I do I'm just going to cut little bits away with my hands so that's one bit the next bit I did was I wanted to keep this bit here so I took this all the way down the Eiffel Tower and then I took this all the way to the corner and again I tore this bit I didn't want any straight edges and I took this bit off. If you want to take a bit more, then be my guest. Oops. And then do what I do and just tear it apart, really. Um, okay, so then I took this bit. And finally, I wanted the Eiffel Tower. And what I did was I sort of went along the line with the Eiffel Tower, try not to do what I'm doing and ruin it. And then you're left with this bit and this bit okay so you've basically taken your stamp and torn it into pieces basically that's what you've done just need to get this little edge I don't want to tear too much of it away and each time you do it obviously it's going to come out different it's never going to be the same and then I'm left with these four pieces now the four pieces what I did was I added a little bit of colour to them. I used the same distress ink and just made it, tapped it on, sort of subtle, but I don't want too much of the um, white space in the background. Okay, so I did that first. Then I used what I used this crack, uh, cracked pistachio, and then I did the same with that. Just come in where you've left the bits and that will bring the book together as well and then you've got that and there you go so really really nice way to work with the stamps as well so if you're thinking oh what will I do with that stamp I can only use it for this or this well there's loads loads of ways to use it again I'm going to take this and I'm going to run it across my stamp images so very similar or same technique as what you've just done Let's make it a little bit quicker i'm just going to pour some now take my finger it makes it just a bit quicker for me i have more control okay so that's one if you don't like any of it you know you're going to be bending all these up anyway if you want you can run a little bit on the back of them as well because then if you turn it over, it's at least got it on the back. So, there we go. And so all you're doing is this just, like I said, bits of card that I had left over. I've not gone to too much trouble. You can use cardstock, obviously. And finally, let's get this bit done as well. And then you see how it comes, starts to come together slowly but surely. Okay, so what we need to do with these is do exactly the same. Push them in. And again, you can grunge this up as much as you like. If you want to put more on it, then do so. Just covering each of the edges. And then again, I'm even going to fold this one in a little bit so it looks like a leaf. Use your fingers. Can you see how all of it is just, they're just so beautiful pieces. <laughs> you can make tags like this using this and it would be lovely. I never thought about that, so that's my next thing. Maybe I'll make a little tag book using all the different stamps. Um, so all I'm doing is just pressing that through. Hopefully, oh, thank you, Min, that's very kind of you. It's just a little bit different and I just really like doing this sort of look. So it's got a lot of dimension and it all comes together really quite easily. And it is like a little bit scary when you first start. Okay, so those are the four bits of my stamp. Let's put them aside with the rest of my project. Right, next bit, let's do the clock because I think that would be a good one to quickly do. Very, very similar to what you did with the background. Don't overthink it go in I don't I cut this in green because I had it already cut but if you cut this in white or a beige 
then maybe you would like to keep it in that sort of beige and just add some brown to it. But because I've already got it in this colour and sometimes that happens, you may have cut it or you might want to use some old paper up. Just take something that you've already got. Use all the colours you've used in the background, i.e. the the um, the, white, the white coffee, the, the mint, any of those colours and just go for it. It's not a problem. And then just keep going. My phone is so loud. It has a noise of its own. And then take a little bit of the mint. Try not to dip your brush into the same things. And again, this will all add to your texture. Yeah. And you can keep doing this with anything that you are going to use. I'm just showing you just something that you can create. And look at that already. Come, it was like that. It's like this. And again, we're going to add some brown to that. So to break that up, let me just give that a quick dry. I have to rush a bit because obviously I don't want to keep you all night. Okay, so you've got that, and then what you can also do, just to add a little bit more detail to that, is take your stamp again, take your brown ink pad, make sure it's dry so you don't get it all over your stamp, just stamp randomly, stamp randomly, ink randomly, and then stamp, and that will give you a beautiful finish, I'll show you that in a minute, you could even crack all this, so now you've got this really nice sort of vintage look, so that's that bit and then the next bit we want to do on that again is you want to add a little bit of brown to the edges maybe to the center bit and then what you're going to show and look it's just you know with a few bits I'm always so oh my god it's so lovely I just want to keep it like that now I don't want to use it okay so that's another bit so look we're collecting Okay, next bit. Now, we've got one of these, so I don't know if I'm going to use these, but I will ink them up because I think it would be nice just to show you how they could be used or not be used. Okay, so again, let's do the edges. You could stamp onto this one as well. These papers just take inks and crackles and, oh gosh, everything so well so pleased with the quality their matte finish really beautiful to die cut really nice to work with and again look at that and because you've already got that texture in the paper it is so much easier now you could if you wanted to come in again take your brush and add a little bit of the the green again so again we've made this beautiful again you could stamp over that look at that I just love what you can do with a bit of paper. Right, so we're going to take this, we're going to take what I've got on my brush, take it all onto top of this because we can. I've got a bit of brown there. And this is just to add texture to the rest of the, the overall image I've got. Okay, what I'm going to do is just tuck it into that. You can see that Dali really doesn't overthink anything. And again, look. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. There we go. A dye that I recommend for everybody. Um, and the other dye I really recommend is this flower. Okay, this was just the papers. Right, now, again, all you need to do is just go in, do all your colouring first. So I'm just going to add a little bit of green to this on the edges. Bring it in a little bit so it brills it all in. Again, really beautifully cut from the papers. Um, just add that. So now it's all about just bringing all this composition together. Composition. And it's just like... It is, isn't it, Gloria? It's simple, it's effective, it's easy. And once you've got techniques, you can then use your own techniques and add, add your own personal touches to this very very easy to do so
so it's just knowing sometimes it's just knowing where to start and again just use your browns bring them in and all of a sudden you change these papers to that sort of mixed media level you could keep it all clean do a really clean card but use the same concept you know okay so just keep doing that okay there we go so i'm just going to leave it at that bit but on this one, look, she doesn't even think what she's doing. Oh, did we forget to paint this one? I think we did. I can tell when I've not painted it. Okay, so that's good enough for me, and I don't mind they're overlaid or anything. I think that's enough elements for me to... Oh, I've got one more element. I'm actually going to... We've got these little violins. They're so inexpensive. Hobbylish has cut them for us. So, I think Paul bought them in when I wasn't here. And they are so cute. I'm going to paint it up. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I think I'm going to introduce it into my project. And I'm just going to take this lovely, and you could crackle this, actually. That's what I would have done. And I could still crackle it, couldn't I? And that would look really nice. You could cover it with the papers. There's loads of things you could do. It is so cute. They're really inexpensive. So, and they are really solid MDF, so... They are lovely. I'm just going to do the sides a little bit. Don't need to do the back. And I don't mind if I don't do them 100% because they've got a nice brown finish. So I'm going to leave some of that brown showing. There we go. Look at how easy that was. I'm going to pick some of this up because I missed one of my flowers. Where is it? This one. I remembered I missed it. See? Even I know when I've missed something. Okay. So we've got that bit. And again, we're going to add a little bit of the brown to this. So it just keeps it in line with whatever I've been doing. Okay, I'm just going to dab that down. And can you see the effect I've already got? It's just so pretty. Really, really simple, but so, so pretty. Yeah, so I'm quite happy with all of these. Let's start by doing the next next bit as well. First, let me do the flower, so then I've got that ready for us as well. Now, the easiest way I find to do flower, I don't know where my mat is. I have, whoops, I have no idea. Now I'm dropping everything. Um, but I have this little bit, <laughs> bit of packaging from something. Let's pretend it's good enough. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take these four, which is... There's more than four, there should be. Two, three, four, five. Take a ball tool, or whatever you have handy. If you don't have one, you can always shape them with your hands. But these are, the paper is beautiful to shape. It takes seconds to do, look. And you can make these into flat flowers. You can make them for Christmas. You can use them. The dye is absolutely beautiful. If anybody wants one, you will have to ask us because they're brand new and they are just sitting in my box at work. But they are beautiful to work with. Now you can do these a couple of ways. You can join all these up, like I've done, which I'm going to quickly show you. I don't want to take too long showing you how all this comes together. You can always watch me on Rewind as well, or on YouTube, I should say. Okay, that's good enough for me. Take that brush again and give your petals a little twirl. You don't need to do it to all of them because otherwise they'll all face the same way and then we'll be in trouble. But can you see how lovely that is when you work with this paper? I'm just gonna bend them a little bit. But so, so easy to work with. Yeah. Not too much, but just enough to give me a little bit of texture. Now you can do this several ways. The easiest way I find is take the first one, do a roly poly on it, and because it's double, it's uh, it's double sided. You don't have to worry about the other side. And you can use a bit of glue, a bit of tape. I'm just going to use the hot glue because it's the easiest way for me to stick them down. Always be careful when you use hot glue because I end up burning myself. I'm really sorry, I've moved myself out of the camera. Just going to glue that down. So you've got your first little bud there. Then go to the second one. 
and all you're doing is joining them together. You can just join them at the top, the tips, um, and this will just create your, and that's what I'm going to do, is I'm not going to go to too much trouble on this one. Um, and I'm just going to show you, this is how you do it. So you just go in and you're just joining them. Yeah, be careful with your fingers. I'm not worrying about the bottom. Don't worry about them that they look like this. Once it all comes together, you'll see how easy it is to actually put together. And it's nice because the double-sided papers mean that you don't have to worry about anything. So just go in. I'm not even worrying about the bottom bits too much. So can you see how I'm joining them? The glue there. So look at that. It's so beautiful. Don't need to do the big one. And again, this one. So, let me see what we've got. Hopefully you're all here. Oh, thank you, Pip, for letting us know. Yeah, they're not on my site either, unfortunately. They are for another collection, but we will, if anybody wants it, they can ask Pip or they can ask me. And we will get you one. How big is approximately the largest die? That's a very good question. I would say, let me grab a ruler. Uh, the largest one is in centimetres is just shy of seven centimetres probably could say yeah just shy of seven centimetres wide so it's a circumference diameter so quite a nice nice size let me see what that is in inches, because I work in inches. So that is just over two and a half inches. Two and a half inches wide. Okay, so I've got all my little bits done. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is, is go in the order that they are. And what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to... Um, what I tend to do is, you don't have to do this. Let me take this off here, because I probably end up melting all that. Is that, uh, you've got all your bits is start off with all of them and then stick them down. Now, I tend to do is just cut this bottom bit a little bit so it lies a little bit flat. You don't have to do this. I just find it a little bit easier. You're not going to see it. And then I just sit that in there. Okay? Very, very easy die to work with. If you do this with the stamps, they look beautiful. So, there we go. And then we get the next layer. Turn everything around. Everything wants to go for walkies. Let me move that out of the way. Um, and I'm using the front page so you can tell because I've got I've got other things on it. <laughs> so, and then you can start to shape it once you've got it in there. So it's not a problem. Okay. So what we're doing is this is such. I really want to play so much with this flower die so that I can and offset them to the ones you've got previously. Okay, really, really easy. Again, cut the bottom off. You don't have to. If you want a heightened flower, then go for it. If you want it bigger, go for it. But what you make with this is amazing. And what I tend to do is I always look at how big the middle should be. So this is a bit too big. And again, each time you do it, your papers will be different. The colours will be different. And each time you do it, you will get a different, different result. Glue gun wants to run, I think. And there we are. So, next thing to do, other than taking all your gluey strips away, is just to come in and then just push it. I tend to push mine in, and I find that works for me. And again, you can come in with your brushes again, you can come in and do whatever you want to do to it. I just like the fact that I can come in, I can push them all together and create this really nice, nice flower. And I just love, I don't know why I love them, I just love them. And I think they look really nice and each time you do it, you'll get a different effect. And I'm not doing it brilliantly today, but I'm, I'm just showing you, by pushing them out you get different effects, by pushing them in you get different effects. By layering them as one to one, you get different effects. So you get all these different different effects with them. See how beautiful that is, and we've got one on here as well. 
so you know what it looks like. That's got glitter paste on it, so you get a little bit of glitter on the card on there. Right, now I did promise I would start and put this together for you. So, best way for me to start, I did actually start with the flower, believe it or not, because I wanted to know where and how I was going to position my flower. Okay, so I sort of positioned my flower on it. But, now as you can see, it can get lost. So that is one of the reasons why we have this as well. Yeah, all of a sudden now, if you want to cut that down a bit, you can. You're getting already layers. First thing I want to do is I'm going to just tie a little bit of string to the side, just to add a little bit more texture. Okay, and the way I tend to do it is I tend to pull my string down, go back up again, and then leave that a little bit longer than that. Don't do it too tight, because I did so, but do leave enough so you can actually get underneath it. Just tie, if you feel you're not sure, just tie a loose knot in it. Just like my scissors. And that way you'll, you'll know for sure. Okay, so you've got your two strands there. And what I do is I tie a little bow with it. Really, really, sorry, really, really easy peasy. She says, really easy peasy, then she can't do it. So I hope you're um, enjoying this. Thank you, Bing. I know sometimes it just comes together. It is a lovely flower, Gloria. I really recommend the dye. Right, it works with all our collections as well, which is one of the reasons I love it. Okay, so you've got a little bit of that strand. It just adds another layer of texture. That's all I'm trying to do here. Okay, let's go with this. I'm going to tuck that in there. Because I quite like, quite like that there. Yeah? And I, I would suggest to you that you lay it all out and you do it. I don't work like that, but I know a lot of you would work like that. So take your time. If you want to put uh, pads underneath it to layer it up even more, go for it. But I quite like this style. Okay, so one of the things I'm thinking of doing is I'm thinking of introducing like the violin with my flower. So I'm just seeing how that would work or would that be better maybe even on this side and then I could always put another flower on that so you say you just have to work it out what works what works for you yeah so I'm thinking I might even have a think about it and again you'll see that you'll start to think about it and things will start to come fall into place so again what I would do with this one is, because it's got a lot of blue, um, sorry, green, and it's got a lot of brown, is you need to put a little bit of pop of blue on that. Because if you don't, you're going to lose it in the background. Okay, let's use my brush because I'm putting my fingers into everything. Uh, and not a lot, but just enough just not to lose it in the background. You'll see. And it just adds, again, another layer another texture, nothing much, very little product. See how that's already added? I love these effects. Um, so I think I'm going to put that there, oops, like that. Now the other thing you could do is bring it a little bit more so it's sort of tucked in like that to give you even more dimensions. That's good. So far, happy. Right, so where are we going to put this? Now, I want to tuck this in. Now, you could put it as a hole behind it, but I want it to be different levels. So I don't want it to be circular. And that's the reason why I cut it. So if I look at 12, uh, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'm sort of going with this side and this side. That's just the way I've cut it. If you don't have this, you'll have some sort of die that will work for you. So maybe I will, as you can see, I've actually, okay, so don't worry too much about any, anything. So how you see how all of a sudden this starts to, to come together, okay? So I like that bit there, and I'm going to just stick that bit in there so I don't lose it. 
very quickly. You would use probably a heavy body gloss or bottom mat, whatever you have handy. And that way you don't stick your pieces 100% down because you always want to tuck things in. You always want to put other bits in. I haven't finished with this side yet, so I'm still working on that side. Okay. Okay. So the other thing we've got is we've got this corner up here. So we still want to keep that corner there. And we could raise that, but I'll just stick that there. It's like a postage stamp then, that bit. Yeah? But obviously we've still got things to do. Um, the little Eiffel Tower is going to sit over here. So, looks like a little... Let's give it a little bit more shape. Because we haven't given the stamps as much shape, but I'm, I'm okay with that. And again, just a bit of glue and let's sort of off center it just adds another dimension now you could use maps behind it as well just put that on there just so I don't knock it okay next thing remember we have this as well so maybe don't want to make it too busy though so i have to be careful now this bit i really like because it's like another leaf so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that like that. So let's stick this bit in here. Don't stick your string down because you want your string to have its bow or I, I want it to have its bow. Okay. I think I'm going to stick this in now as well. So this is where it all just, I don't know why it works, but it just works. Um, okay. I don't mind it's lifted, but if you want it to tuck it a little bit behind, then you can. There you go. Then what we want to do is put a little bit of the violin here. And then we can put that just there. See what it looks like? Like that. And so the violin can still show and we still have bits on that. We're still working on it. So there we go. And then we're going to stick the flower there. And then what we can do is I need to get another bit of the wooden piece. But it's taken me a little bit longer than I want. I don't want to always keep me so long. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to raise that so that has to sit on the back like that because I want that raised and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some thread and I'm going to make some little strings with my thread I know it's going to be difficult but I just want to give it that effect so I'm just taking a bit of thread and oh, I'm not the best person to do this but it will give it a little bit more texture than it did have and then what you could do is you could even take it so it's gone round as well. And what it does is it just adds, adds to it. You could do this if you're better. I'm sure you're all better at doing this than I'll ever be. This string does this. This doesn't cut, even that pulling, obviously. And look, you've got this like little bit of. It just looks different, doesn't it? It's just good. Right. So let's put that down. Let's put this here. And again, it just adds a little bit. And these are really, like I said, if you need any of these, then let us know. Because they're pretty new to us. There you go. So you've got that bit there. And look at that already. That looks absolutely brilliant. Now, what I want to do is, I'm going to break this because I don't want it to be so, so big. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give each of these a little pop yeah so now can you see how it is and how easy uh, it is it definitely is and it's uh, really beautiful to work with so again you can just add and what I tend to do is sometimes I like to have them raised but then I put one little bit of it down so then what you have is when you've 
when you've got it, it's not, it's, it's still raised, but it's not too, too in the way, like this bit here. I would then put a little bit of glue just at the bottom and just touch that little tip because then you've not got things floating about too much. Yeah, look at that, look at that for dimension. I like in my little violin, it needs a bit of glue on it. Okay, so you've still got all these bits. So what I want to do now is probably build, bring a little bit over here. We need to cut that little bit out now. Because otherwise it will look odd because it looks like I've broken it. Okay, and then put that into here. And again, so you've got little bits everywhere. Again, like I said, just put a little bit of glue just to anchor them, I suppose. is a good. Can you see where I'm going with this? Oh, gosh. Other than the stringy bits. Okay, so you've got all of that going on there. You've got a little bit of a gap here, so what we could do, let's have a look. And you know, you want to sort of, you don't want the violin to look like it's just, somebody's just forgotten about it. So you want it to sort of fit in. I like that there. So I know it's a lot. Um, you could introduce lighter colours, you could change the composition, but this is how I like, I think it's a really nice way to build layers, to add, add a little bit, and then she does it, and then she forgets where it was, um, and then you're, you're just adding this such a beauty of stuff. And then it's just coming together. I don't know how it comes together, it just does. For me it does anyway. And can you see how that now, the violin doesn't look like you've just stuck it on. And it wasn't meant to be there. Now I have got feathers and I could bring in some white elements. Oops, she says. And I could bring in some lighter elements and build it in. So let me just do that, see if it works. It might not work. So bear with me. Okay. And then, got a little bit more to do, not much. I'm going to stick this bit down now that we know it's sticking. There we go. And that's good. So you've got that bit. So we've got a little bit of these feathers. Let's see. I just feel like I could do with a little bit more. Not too much now, because that would not be a good look. I'm just going to stamp onto them. Very quickly, just want some of the little gaps to be filled. Yeah, and that's all I'm doing. And then what I want to do is I'll probably put a little bit of this on, on the on the base. Not too much. Add a little bit of water. Spritz them in there. I want them to stay quite light. Um, and I don't want them to break. We do have lots of these as well somewhere on the site. If not, we have whole die cut sheets of feathers which are really nice for accents. And then what we can do is just bring those in. It might work, it might not work. I just picked them up thinking they might do. Oh, yeah. Lots of little threads. Yeah. And then what we can start to do. So if you see any gaps, or you want to fill any gaps up, so I think it might be a bit too much. What do you all think? Do you think it's too much? I'm just thinking, do I need any more? I don't need any more, really, do I? Let's have a look. Maybe. What do you all think? Uh, I need more, don't need more, I'm not sure now. Not 100% sure. Not 100% sure on them, but what I do have, and I do want to use, and I have got, is I do want to add some of these because these were what was left off my doily die the other week, and I know that these will work really, really well. And all I'm doing is dipping those in, and they really do add. I don't know why they do, but they do add a really nice bit of contrast to this project. 
I've got only little bits and they're leftovers from the baby stuff I did the other day. So, this is why I think it's really nice to have little doily dies um, just sitting there. There you go, so that bit will look really nice up here. So I just know that it will work um, because it's just little detail and it's just breaking up some of these little little bits that are just maybe look like they're, they're on their own and I don't want them to be on their own. So that's all it is. And I think I'm nearly there. I've got to do a little bit of thread. There we go. And I think it just balances things up that are not balanced to me. So all I'm trying to do is now balance anything that doesn't have any balance, um, whatever that means. So the next thing, see, look at all that. It's only on a bit of cardboard. Can you see? So that was that one. I'm still doing this, but yeah. And then what I do is I take that really nice thread I had. You could take any thread. A blue would look nice on this now. I was saying that. I haven't got blue in front of me, so we have to do the, the brownie colour. Um, roll it around in your hand. Put a bit of glue down, or you can put some gel down. And let's put some down here. Just gives them more focal points. Again, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit a little little butter butterfly onto that on that side, or oh, I could stick one up there as well, and what I'm going to do, let's have a look, I've got quite a lot going on here, but I haven't got as much going up on this corner, so what I might do is do a little bit more thread over here, and put it up at the top, because I've got a lot going on everywhere else, and you could make your card so it was half and half was empty, so you could have left this empty and just put a sentiment on it, yeah? So I'm going to put that up here to break. It's a great way. Thread is a lovely way to break up the space. Thread, cheesecloth, any of those things, a really nice way to do it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this beautiful pen. Metal embellishments are a must. And he's only little, but he just does what I want him to do. Right, finally, we're nearly there, ladies. What am I doing? All I need to now do is I chose to do some splashes. I'm going to do some in blue. Obviously at home, take your time. Add a little bit of water. I don't think I've got any water in there now. It's too deep. Let's put some water down. Add a bit of your paint. There you go. And then try not to splash it on everything like Dolly always does. And then just come in and do your splashes. It really does bring it to life. This last bit is what brings it to life for me. And if you want to go in, do any more colouring on anything, this you, know, you can do that. It's not a problem. Take that off there. Now finally we're going to add a little bit of brown. some brown going, a bit of water, a little bit of brown and again the brown will just bring it together. See? Don't get carried away too much but and you could put some gold wax on this, you could add you know what I did was I added a little bit of um, glitter paste which I really like just to highlight like I just used, actually I used rainbow glitter paste and what I did was I just took a bit of a spatula, nothing too complicated and just added it to the tips. Didn't overthink anything, just went in, added bits so you got a little bit mainly on the, on the sides, you could add a little bit to the bottom of your strings. Not too much, because that's not what I want it to be about, but what it does, it does add a little bit of sparkle, 
a little bit of texture it's all about texture for me right hopefully you can now see that and you like it thank you everybody love all the comments thank you so much now can you see very little you don't need much you need some paper you need some cardboard you need a bit of thread if you've got any I haven't got any thread just take a pillowcase pull it apart um, so there you go lots and lots of texture there by just using one sheet of the rustic um, Paris and also a sheet just to do your die cuts if you need to I mean, in fact I did my die cut up the leftovers um, one little piece of scrap paper to do your stamp which really does add to this effect so obviously this one I've put rustic Paris on this one I haven't so just to show you that was the one there and then that's the other one so there's not much difference oh, it's hard to show you isn't it there's not much difference considering I did both of them today um, one this morning and one a bit later so but can you see there's enough difference obviously there's a violin in this one um, there's a little bit of it's got rustic Paris on there I could put you know rustic Paris onto there as well and then that would give you that balance but I might put journey on this one or music so there you go I hope you've enjoyed it um, and yes Gloria it's just using paper and it's amazing what you can do with just paper I think we underestimate what we can do with paper so this is a, a really nice way um, and I just I tell you what I really love is I love all the dimension on these and put it in a beautiful box or put it on top of a box and it would look absolutely gorgeous I don't have a box big enough to show you but it would look really really nice but say if you had a book or something take the back one, and you wanted to make it in the, you know if you had a box and you wanted to make it into a cover then you could easily do that and it would look beautiful or what about a shadow box something like that so thank you thank you everybody um, I'm really pleased that you've enjoyed it you liked it you could do it in a reverse canvas and really build this up and the sides up so but have a lovely day enjoy the sunshine and I will see you all very very soon thank you for all the love Pip thank you everybody I really really appreciate your time that you spend with me um, and Pip and um, please enjoy the new ranges but thank you bye for now